Hello uh, and welcome gamers. Uh, this is a bit of a new experience for me. I typically don't do this. I don't, I'm not very good at public speaking. What you you think about this is a form of public speaking. But, let's be honest. I'm tired of the state of Call of Duty. Been tired for a while. Haven't had a good one in years. The last good one was Black Ops 2 and that was questionable. I mean, if someone says it's a bad game, I can't really defend it, but I did enjoy it. But it had flaws. So, when I heard about Black Ops 3, I realized this is probably the last great chance for any of us having a good Call of Duty, because let's be honest, Infinity Ward, they're, good, they're done. I'm never buying an Infinity Ward product again. Sledgehammer Games, they're done. Treyarch is the only one left, and I know most gamers have given up on Treyarch. That's just a simple fact. I haven't, maybe because maybe I'm just a hopeful idiot. And this whole endeavor of mine may be a full-long hope, but it has to be done. So this will be given directly, you know, tweeted, I should say, tweeted directly to David Vonderhaar of Treyarch. Now, if Mr. Vonderhaar, if you watch this, which I hope you do, and take what I say into account, at least put it into account, you know, at least take consideration of it. If you're the wrong person this should be going to, then please do me the favor of directing it to someone who has creative authority if you're not that guy. I'm not real familiar with who's in charge over there, but you're the most common name. Now, if there's someone above you that I should be talking to, then tweet me their, hit, their name, and I'll discuss it with them. Or I'll send future videos to them. But I'll still send it to you, though, since you're the, uh, as I've seen, the unofficial community manager of Treyarch. But enough lollygagging, let's get to the point. What do I want in Black Ops 3? Changing the entire gun system, to be honest. What I mean by Mr. Vonderhart and those at Treyarch is that modular combat rifles are the future. Mainly for economical reasons and logistical reasons and just flat out flexibility sake modular combat rifles will replace single purpose weapons a uh, single purpose weapon being like it was a rifle that was just designed to be an assault rifle and nothing else or a, a weapon system that was designed just to be a sniper rifle and nothing else those are going to become fewer and fewer <clears throat> Because weapons like, let's say, the XM8, or as it was called in Black Ops 2, the M8A1, is a modular combat rifle. It is designed to be an assault rifle, carbine, personal defense weapon, LMG, and marksman rifle. That's what it was designed to be. It was designed to be several weapons into one. And it was perfect for this role. Very perfect indeed. They didn't complete army trials, but the principle stuck. And now more and more rifles are going to this model. Now, one can make the debate there was other rifles before it that can do the same thing. You can make that case. But regardless of what was the first rifle to do this, that is the future. And I think since Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is going to be based in the future... Rumors are it's going to be like a 2050. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I'm going to safe to assume it's going to be somewhere between 2025 to 2050. Then the majority of the rifles you have should be modular by nature. Therefore, instead of just doing a class system like you pick an assault rifle, you pick an LMG, or you just pick a an SMG, you change it. Instead of the classes, you pick the design. 
you pick the basic receivers. That's all you select. And from there, you start adding in little things. <laughs> I'm not a weapons person, so I can't give out the exact terminology, but... You can pick the lo the length of your barrel. You can pick the amount of ammunition that you have in a single magazine. The rail system. The attachment. The type of stock you're using. The type of grip. The type of iron sight. Complete customization of weapons. Now, of course, if you don't want to go into the mass amount of details, like, would you like to change the upper receiver? and the lower receiver, or do you want to change out the bolt of the weapon? You know, if you don't want to go into that amount of detail, I can understand. All you can do is a simple concept. Just take the basic form of the rifle, like the XM8, obey the at Let me get away from the XM8 for a second. Let's go with the SCAR. The SCAR light and the SCAR heavy also have two more variants, which one of them was featured in Black Ops 2. Let me uh, look it up real fast. What was it called? Oh, uh, where is it? I think it was called the Hammer, wasn't it? Going like... Yep, the Hammer. Which is pretty much a scar that's been customized into a saw mo you know, status. An LMG, squad automatic weapon type firearm. You can, instead of just having that in an LMG category, have it in the SCAR category. So you take the SCAR, the basic frame of the SCAR, and the player will decide, like, go into his own little menu, and decide if you want the SCAR light, the SCAR heavy, the LMG SCAR, which, the hammer, or the marksman variant, the sniper rifle variant, which is out there. This would reduce the clutter greatly and give players an option of what they want to choose. And also gets rid of the quick scopers, because if you remove you do this system, you won't need a whole category just for sniper rifles. And let's be honest, some of you over there want to get away from sniper rifles. You want to get away from quick scoping. There's more gamers who would cheer if you get rid of that. This system will guarantee the removal of quick scoping. Because, let's be honest, during your own pr the principle of it all, semi automatic sniper rifles take more than one hit to kill somebody. Regardless of what caliber it is. Gameplay wise, I kind of call BS on that because if I'm using a 50 caliber rifle that's semi automatic, I should be able to kill somebody in a single bullet. But, I get it, gameplay balance, so sometimes you have to screw realism for balance. I get that. Frustrating, but I understand. You can get rid of the quick scoping mentality, you can get rid of that. And gamers will love you for it. You do this modular combat rifle system, that every rifle you have in this game can be turned into any of these categories. Assault rifle, marksman rifle, because get rid of snipers entirely and just stick with marksman rifles. So you don't have to worry about quick scoping, assholes. Pardon my language. I, I can't get a little passionate about that, but I'm rambling to get back to the point. The LMG version. The carbine version. And the P... DW version, or what you would call the SMG version. This could be done with almost any modern rifle. You even have some of them in your games. Let me pull them up. The uh, M27, for example. Fantastic assault rifle, my favorite assault rifle, and, and Black Ops 2. And Ghost. It's an LMG. Which is good. Because it's showing those variants. So you can't, you have the basis for having both the assault rifle version of the M27 and the LMG version. 
of the same weapon. Now, if you see on the screen, you see the Type 95, basic Chinese rifle at the moment. Now, in Black Ops 2, you had the Type 25, which I'm assuming is the 2025 version of the Chinese assault rifle. The 25, the Type 25 meaning, should have the same features, just improved, of the Type 95. So it should have an assault rifle version, uh, an SMG version or PDW, a squad arm mag version, you know, squad arm mag rifle version, forgive me for butchering it, the marksman version, the carbine version, and so on. Modular rifles, as I said before, are the future, and you should stick with that design instead of just having. Uh, like I said before, having an assault rifle category, uh, an LMG category, a uh, sniper rifle category, a uh, light machine gun category. <clears throat> Just have them all the same rifles. Just separated by categories. Like the Type 25 category, the SCAR category, the M27 category, the M8A1 category. And so on and so forth. The Scar, the Galil. Please bring back an updated version of the Galil. It's a fantastic rifle. I, I'm a personal fan of it. I'm a bit of a fanboy, actually, of it. Or bring in the Polish MSBS. That is a fantastic rifle, and I'm going to bring that up just now. But yes. That's a fantastic rifle. You can do so much to it. You can have conventional loading. Well, at least that's why I call it the conventional, like, full, up front of the uh, trigger loading. Uh, and bullpup. Now, any gun person out there, if there's an actual name for that type of style, other than traditional, let me know and I'll, I'll be most appreciative. Let's just say that. Of what I call, you know, the where you load a front of the trigger instead of behind the trigger. Now, back on point. Sorry about that. There's also the AK 47s out there. Well, the AK series. God bless Kalashnikov, right? Created one of the most legendary rifles out there. May he rest in peace. There is one, you know, you have the AK-12, you have the AK-74, which will still be used. In fact, you never really, as a series, never touched it, which I'm surprised. You know, you kept using the 47, which made sense. The 47 is going to be out there for, even when I'm an old man, you're still going to have the 47 out there. But we still have the 74 that's going to be out there as well, since that replaced the 47 in the Russian Armed Forces. Even if it's deep in the future, we're going to see guys, bad guys, using the 47. And the 74. Mostly the 74. I think the 47s will probably end up going away by then, maybe. But the 74 is definitely. The 74M. You got the AKS 74s. You have the AKS 74U, which has been used. The U version, you know, 74Us, been used several times. Though, oddly, always in the SMG category when it was technically a carbine. A very, very small carbine, but a carbine nevertheless. And the Sagat. I think that's how you pronounce uh, the Russian shotgun. The Sagat 12. Outstanding shotgun. Love it. That shotgun, to prove my point about modular rifles, the basis of that weapon was came. The frame and everything came from the AK-74. Uh, they didn't just build a new shotgun from scratch. They just took the AK-74 uh, receiver and design, modified it, gave it a barrel, a, a barrel set that took 12 gauge rounds instead of you know the 7.62 millimeter rounds, and then they had the Shagat. If I'm mispronouncing that, please correct me. Um, my Russian isn't that good. <laughs> Not very good with that. But, you get the point. You could do the exact same thing 
with the AK-12. Theoretically speaking, it's in the deep future. You could get away with it. Or to create a new AK altogether, called the AK-25. And just have it be the basic. You know, like, like I said earlier, with the mo other modular rifles, like the SCAR, the XMA, the G36. Alright, you could just take the basic frame and turn that AK into an LMG. Take that AK and turn it into a carbine. Just like a 74U. Turn it into a personal defense rifle. Well, not, I mean, not rifle, I'm a weapon. Sorry. Uh, SMG, for those who don't know. You can turn it into a marksman rifle. You can turn it into a shotgun. You can do a lot of things with this concept. And I think Call of Duty would have a huge advantage over the competition if they went with the modular rifle design. Instead of just doing, oh, well, we, we like this rifle, let's throw that in there. Oh, we like this uh, assault rifle, but we're going to ignore the other aspects of that rifle. I mean, you technically are only using, you know, the current method you're doing, you're only using 25% of the rifle, like with a SCAR. Well, actually, in, the, in your defense in Black Ops 2, you use 50% of what the SCAR is capable of. I mean, you can do a lot more. You can, why settle for 25% of the weapon, of the overall design, when you exploit the weapon 100%? You can make this so better. And also, get rid of this whole limited attachments. I know you, you think you're doing this for game balancing reasons. I get it. We all want balance. But it's time for you to innovate. Your competitor, Battlefield, for example, they don't need, they don't have a limit on attachments. They just don't. You can put a, your own muzzle flash, you can put your own um, grip on there. Any type of grip, you can put a sight on any sight you want. You can put a little laser sight or a flashlight attachment on your rifle. Alright, you can do whatever you want with it. Within reason, of course. You know, you can't have a grip and a an uh, underbarrel grenade launcher, so you kind of have to like compromise on that front. But just picking one or two attachments only that that can't, that doesn't do it anymore. Oh, with all due respect, uh, Mr. Vandahar and Activision. That's I guess that's who I should address it to, to be honest. Because even if you do what I request, you know, and, you know, you actually do the modular rifle system and you somehow save Call of Duty. You made the best Call of Duty ever, Mr. Vonderhaar, and Treyarch saved it. There's still two other studios that can come in and they'll probably end up screwing it up. You know, Infinity Ward will probably screw it up. You know, I'm not, I'm trying, to be, I'm not trying to be mean or rude to the, the folks at Infinity Ward. They're probably great people, nice people. I probably, if we met, probably get along good. But that can't be done anymore. I just, I can't, well, pfft. On them making a quality game. What you need is a new engine, but something tells me Activision's Vision's not going to allow you to create a whole new engine for this. Not yet. But that's what's required, but right now this is more along the lines of triage. You're trying to save what you can to buy time. And the other two studios, after your turn's over, will probably end up screwing it up. I hope I'm wrong, and if you're offended, if you work at Sledgehammer or Infinity Ward and you're offended by this, prove me wrong. That's all, I, that's all you have to do. After Treyarch's turn, prove me wrong and make the game better. You make one good game, one good game, I will make a video retracting my dis, uh, dismissal of your capabilities as a game developer. And I will be happy to do so. But yes, if you make a great game, if you manage to succeed in this, I will praise you for it. And don't just be throwing like sales numbers because that doesn't mean anything anymore. I'll, because you don't take into account how many of that gets returned. There are people buying your game on the faith that it's going to be good. But they end up being disappointed. They take the game back to GameStop or wherever. They get rid of it. 
I mean, if you look online, you're not seeing that many people play it anymore. Well, at least you could, because for some odd reason, you don't put how many people are in a lobby anymore, or online total. Very, uh, devious, don't you think? And the whole desperate attempt on micro DLC, you know, the supply drop DLCs, that scam, that isn't a sign of desperation at all. No, 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 no siree, that is not uh, a sign of desperation, Sledgehammer. No, 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 and Treyarch, you better not follow that model because that is an idiotic model to follow. But that's a video for another time. Originally, I was going to do everything in one video, but seeing the length of it so far, I come to realize that a couple hour video, you know, a video lasting a few hours, is not going to be tolerable to sit through. So, 30 minutes at most. So, I'll be talking about customization, perks, and so on in other videos. But back to the point, if you make a good game, I will praise you for it. I want you to make a good game. Give me a reason to praise you. Okay? Add in the modular combat rifle system. Get rid of what you've been doing now. That, that, that ain't working. Current system ain't working. Have selector switch be default. Alright, switch between automatic, burst, and semi-automatic. Do it on a D-pad, just, just like in Battlefield. I don't want you to become Battlefield, but Battlefield has some stuff going for it. It has a lot of stuff going for it, in terms of gunplay. Next, for the love of God, this is what Sledgehammer did, and I don't want Treyarch following, following that direction. No more akimbo only weapons. No more dual wielding only weapons. That SMG they have that you can only hold two of them at the same time. Yeah, because you don't need to aim. You just need to blind fire like a, like a, pardon my language, like a fucking idiot. Or that, that other fucking dumbass thing where you carry two LMGs at the same time and you don't have the option of just carrying one. Because, you know, who the fuck wants to aim with an LMG? Who wants to lay effect at suppressing fire? No, no, no. Stand out in the middle of the fucking hallway. Fire two LMGs simultaneously. Like a fucking idiot. A complete fucking idiot. And pardon my language. Uh, I really do, but I really get passionate. And Advanced Warfare, that type of BS. That BS. Is... One of the reasons why I'm making this video, why I want the modular combat system, because I don't want to be stuck with using dual wielding weapons only. And there's no logical reason to do so. I don't care if you do have an exosuit. You can't hit shit dual wielding. You're just praying and praying. And I love how some of the trolls will say, you know, well, the, with the uh, LMG versions, dual wielding LMGs, it's for suppressing fire. Yeah, suppressing fire my ass. You can't hit shit with it. And you're standing, and you're firing from the hip. Yeah. So you're laying suppressing fire, but guess what? A good marksman can still take you out because you're standing like a giant. You're pretty much stand. You can't, like, fire the way it's handled. You can't exactly fire it from cover. You have to be out of cover to fire from it. Makes no damn sense. It kind of falls into adage, just because an exosuit can carry it, and you could dual wield LMGs, doesn't mean you should. You know, and it's a piece of crap weapon. So Black Ops, please, you know, Mr. Von Hart, don't have dual wielding only weapons and Black Ops 3. No need for that. Please, for the love of God, don't put that in there. Also, another thing I want is increased bullet penetration. Hiding behind a barrel shouldn't be cover. Bullets should be able to rip through barrels like a hot knife through butter. 
I just feel like in the past few games, bullet penetration has gone down dramatically. In Call of Duty 4, you can shoot through almost any surface. Of course, there were exceptions, you know, they were thick enough. You could reasonably stop a bullet from going through. I get that. But lately, it just seems like the only thing you can shoot through now is plywood. That's it. Jesus Christ, if you put a couch in, the, in one of these battlefields in Call of Duty, you could, probably, you could effectively hide behind it. And not worry about a, bu a bullet going through and hitting you. So it's time for the increased bullet penetration. Also, it kind of cuts down on the campers. Those who, like, the, not the bad, not the ones who are strategically holding positions, like smart people, being tactically, tactical, tactical, sorry. I'm a little hyper, so when I hyper, I start mispronouncing things. It's a flaw of mine. I'm trying to get over it. But I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the guy who is hiding in a room with no strategic value, with a shotgun, claymores, everything. A true camper. I want to be able to shoot through the wall. If I can't get to him, I, you know, I can't get through him through conventional methods. I want to take my weapon, point it at the wall, guess where he is, pull the trigger, and take him down. Shoot him through the fucking wall. Pardon my language, pardon my language. I'm not... Calm down. Calm down. Qu don't get hyper. Try not to get hyper. This is my first time. Apologies for the unprofessionalism in this uh, broadcast, so to speak. At least I'm calling it a broadcast. Um, but yeah, I want to be able to shoot through the wall. If there's someone hiding behind <clears throat> cover, hiding behind a table, or hiding in a room behind like a, a cheaply made table, I don't care if it's made out of redwood. I want to shoot through it. Or I want to shoot through the wall to get to him. Because that will make campers really upset. And I want that. I want good camping. I want strategic value. Guys who are camping for strategic and tactical reasons on the map. Not this whole hiding in the corner and expect a cheap kill. Okay? Can't have that. Another thing I want is, well, this is kind of an advanced warfare issue, but less stuff blocking the sky, because I, I'll, I'll admit, my style, I take out enemy air support. I love taking out enemy air support. UAV, gone. Heavy air support, you know, kill streaks, gone. I love doing that. I'm just, I'm a nut with that. Ghost <laughs> was terrible in that front. The only weapon that can take out air support effectively was a kill streak to itself, and the Panzerfaust. You couldn't hit. You couldn't hit anything with that. It was a dumb fire weapon. It fired just as well as the RPG. <coughs> and in advanced warfare, there was so much crap cluttering the skyline, just like build tall buildings that kept blocking the view. And by the time you get to a position where you can shoot that SOB down, shoot down that drone, shoot down that kill streak, it's already leaving. I don't want that in Black Ops 3. Or at least reduce that dramatically. I want to be able to find my target, take it out, and not navigate through built like a series of skyscrapers. Just so I can wait for that five second chance. Less than five seconds. Probably more like a, technically, more like a two second chance of hitting it. Though that's a personal gripe. Either way, that's a personal gripe. It has really nothing to do with foundation. That's just more what I want. But the rest of it, march a lower rifle system, has to be done. That's a must. It's time for Call of Duty to move into the future. Literally into the future. And I think you can do this, Mr. Vonderhaar. I have faith in you. I may be mocked for that faith, but in that faith may even be a forlorn hope. But I have faith in you. And I will make other videos, you know, talking about like the perks system, how I think that needs to be removed and replaced with some replaced with a newer system. But I'll get in detail on that in that video. And customization. Simply put, 
make it faction based like it was in Black Ops 1 none this whole how do I put it confusing silhouettes and Ghost you could barely identify who friend or foe was until the name tab came up and if you're playing hardcore you killed a lot of good friends that way you killed a lot of teammates that way or you got self killed and in advanced warfare it just turned into I mean how to put this it turned into Richtoven's Flying Circus but infantry version and if you don't know who that is that's the Red Baron and his uh, squadron infantry should never be overly colorful it shouldn't be like a raggedy and mash it shouldn't it just shouldn't be looking like that I mean, they have uniform. You know, you're playing your armed forces. You have official uniforms. So my opinion is, and I don't go in a video detailing this, but if you're playing as American troops, you should have American uniforms, and the customization on that should be limited to American gear. Now, when you're playing as Rus and at the same time, you're playing as Russians. You should be limited to Russian gear in your customization option for that character. You get your own, um, you get your own characters for one for an American, one for a Russian, one for Chinese, one for, I'm assuming maybe uh, Op Four, or whatever you choose. You know, like Arab or something like that. Whatever you choose. But like I said, I'll go in better, more detail into that. Uh, right now, I think I'll end it off right there. I will be making more videos. Hopefully my mic quality will improve. Overall quality should improve as well. This is my first time, so it's going to be a little messy. So hopefully I'll learn a lot from this. God willing, I'll get some good feedback from you. Or any feedback, to be honest. I, I really would like to know if you're taking this into consideration. And if you have watched, or well, more along lines, listen. That's what's more important. If you listen to this point, then I humbly thank you. But yes, uh, like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. I can't believe I just said that. Never thought in my life those words would exit my mouth. Ugh. It's not a good feeling. Begging for subscription and begging for following and likes. But regardless. What was Ah, uh, yes. Regardless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vonderhaar, if you continue to listen to this, and hopefully I'll get some decent information in return. If not, no big deal. No big deal at all. As long as you listen, that's all that mattered. And that you respected me enough to finish this video. Sorry, I couldn't keep it any shorter, but very passionate about having this modular rifle system in any game to be honest but Call of Duty seems to be the only one that has the gun mechanics pretty decent and I want to see it in my favorite franchise though it's losing that status very quickly Ghost and Mon Advanced Warfare has pretty much dampened that status you're the only chance it has now. You're the last straw. Don't screw it up. To the rest of you out there, I would like to give some special thanks uh, to certain YouTubers, members of the Knights of the Round Table, Horse Six Zero, who has been a great inspiration for me and has actually helped me out in several cases. Uh, but another thanks to Arch Nemesis, who. I met Horse 6 through Arch Nemesis, and I've been a huge fan of Arch Nemesis' style. May not agree with him with everything, however, he's a fresh voice, and same with Horse 6 a fresh perspective on things, and preventing everything from becoming stale and boring. God bless him. But uh, here's a, a bigger thanks. To another YouTuber that pretty much convinced me that I can do this, even if I can't. 
MP7 Pro. First, I was just a listener to Arch and Horsic Zero. But once you started making videos, it pretty much convinced me to make videos as well. And maybe, hopefully, me making videos will convince someone else to make videos because that's what's important in the end. That's what the gaming revolution coalition is all about. Getting your voice heard, even if it's contrary to the rest of the group. To, you know, the rest of those who follow that mantra. Just getting your voice out there, talking directly to these developers. We have the wonders of the internet. As wonderful as it is, it is very chaotic and very mean-spirited, but it is worth it. In the end. This is the only time when you can directly communicate with pe with heads of studios, with heads of government even, even though technically you're just talking to an intern that's supposed to represent them, but regardless, you can talk to developers personally. You can talk to them directly. Use that opportunity. Push what you want in gaming. Use this grass, wonderful gift and exploit it. Use it. Use it to push it. Push what you want in gaming. Push what you want in movies. Push what you want. And those three I mentioned earlier, Horse 6 Zero, Arch Nemesis, MP7 Probe, have done that. And I'm following as well. I am doing my own thing. Special thanks to all of them. A special thanks to anyone listening. Mega Raptor 18, out. And look out for future videos.